My presentation title is A Collaborative Storytelling and the Self-Reflexive Guides, Imagining, Visualizing, and Adapting African Exoticism Through Video Games. Through the lens of video games, I intend to investigate how digital and inter interactive forms encourage us to revisit and re-examine the narratological aspects of travel writings, the traditional post-colonial discourse, and the relationship between self and other. Video games have become an increasingly popular medium for storytelling in recent years, prompting much discussion among academics about the role of narrative in gaming. Some argue that games are primarily focused on gameplay and that narrative is simply an added bonus, while others believe that games can also be analyzed as works of narrative art. The study of games as narrative objects falls under the broader field of ludology, which explores the rules and mechanics of games and narratology, which examines how stories are told. As for the relationship between the two, so the games and storytelling, critics such as Tom Casavian have noted that one of the motivation that uh, for players to engage with games is their desire to see the story unfold. And other critics have also suggested that the unique nature of games as a storytelling medium allows for the telling of stories in non-conventional ways, giving rise to alternative possibilities and transmedial textuality. Storytelling often takes us to exotic and uncharted territories, offering the allure of exploration and adventure as Colin Monson, the senior level designer for the video game Advanced Warfare, suggested, designers are always searching for captivating and immersive settings that transport players to new and exciting worlds. This can be fantastical, such as an otherworldly planet or a mythical realm, or they can also be grounded in reality, more or less. Like, and far locales like the jungles of South America, where digital storytelling shapes areas that have been relatively marginalized or have been strongly influenced by colonial history. Video games, like other forms of media, can reflect and perpetuate imperial and colonial legacies. For example, games such as Far Cry 2, Tropical, and Age of Empires all present colonial or imperial narratives in their gameplay and the storytelling. Tropical, in particular, has been criticized for its colonized games, which interpolates players through the discourses of capitalism and colonialism, as noted by Christina Magnet. Other critics, however, pointed out that there are also instances where games offer a reflexive view of the other, by presenting examples and narratives of individuals from different cultures and backgrounds. So in this presentation, I'm going to explore more about how interactivity and game mechanisms contribute to this emerging reflexivity and the constructive nature of self and other dichotomy and cultural differences. So in order to do that, I selected some examples from the platform itch.io. Itch.io is an open game community platform, as you can see from its game, the, its name that allows game developers to share and sell their games. It features a diverse range of game types and sub genres catering to different interests and preferences. This platform has also been used in academic research with studies exploring fair coming of age visual novels and the representation of queer indie games on this platform. So the examples I will include come from games in various forms and genres published on the website. Games published on itch.io offer a diverse range of storytelling methods, including some more text-based ones, such as interactive fictions, and some more image-based ones or multimedia ones, such as stock art collections and visual novels. So if you visit them, you will find that some are way more complicated than others. 
with more sophisticated image crafting, recording, or visual and sound effects. But in this presentation, I'm going to choose some simpler examples just to illustrate the mechanisms of interactivity in different forms. To get into the topic, let's first look at three image-based projects published on this website. Those often use interactive landscapes and virtual tourism to immerse players in unique and exotic settings. 3D settings and stock art can create realistic and immersive environments for players to explore. One project published on the platform, Monster Stock Art, African Mythical Creatures, for example, features detailed depictions of creatures from African folklore. There are many similar projects, such as this project titled African Big Five Coloring Pack, which allows players to explore the African savanna and color in depictions of its iconic wildlife. By giving the players the chance to recolor or reshape the original designs of the image, the projects construct the players into active participants rather than the passive observers of the exotic environment. As some critics such as Shandilo noted, in the interactive environments, players are not just observing the action in this case, but are actively participating and controlling the action, creating a sense of agency and engagement that is unique to video games. This is especially the case in 3D setting games, such as this Mizelizaki's Goat, in which the control panel enables the players to change their angles, perspectives, and objects for investigations. They can choose to look at desert trees from a distance, for example, or to get closer and manipulate the details with the tools in your toolbox. In this way, the game not only allows the players to choose what to see in an exotic land, but also how to see it. Emphasizing the sense of otherness as a kind of product of the, your creative gazing eyes. The co-constructed storytelling, I think, is more evident in some multimedia games projects, such as this Lotus of the Nile, where the words, images, and sounds together create an immersive environment. The Lotus of the Nile is a puzzle game developed and published on the indie game platform H. Uh, in 2020. The game is set in ancient Egypt and prompts the players to restore the sacred lotus flowers by manipulating blocks and activating switches. Featuring a colorful and stylized art style inspired by ancient Egyptian culture and architecture, the game received recognition in the game gaming community. It won the Best Mobile Game Award at the 2020 International Mobile Game Awards, Middle East and North Africa, for example. Especially, Lotus of the Nile explores the themes of interactivity, memory, and collaborative interpretation of exotic through its emphasis on restoring the lotus flowers, which is an important cultural object that represents beauty, purity, and eternity in ancient Egyptian culture. So just as said in the intro part of the game, how do we want to be remembered? Collaborative interpretation of the exotic is present in the game as players are transported to ancient Egypt and presented with a stylized and romanticized version of the culture. The game does not present a one-dimensional view of the ancient Egypt, but rather allows players to explore different phases of the cultures through the game's narrative visual design. One of the unique features of the game, for example, is the ability to click and change the story setting from day to night. The most notable feature of this game is the incorporation of the natural human and machine sounds into the gameplay. So by clicking on one petal of the lotus, for example, you add a new local sound to the background soundscape, such as the sounds of animals, of motor, of human daily talks. While removing one local sound from the soundscape, 
would give a different version of how Egypt is represented in the game space. In other words, the player is not placed in an external disinterested position, but is framed as a creator of the exotic who chooses his own vision and paves his own path to the half real, half imaginary land. And finally, I'd like to introduce an interactive story as an example for text-based game projects. The interactive storytelling platforms that is trying provide opportunities for creators to engage with classic literature in new and innovative ways. One example for this is itch.io game Journey to Poly, which was published recently in 2022, which draws inspiration from Rosa Parra's travel writings, especially Heart of Darkness and The Rescue. The game uses Twine to create an interactive narrative that allows players to make choices and impact the story's outcome. Through the use of audio visual text, the interactive story presents a unique interpretation of Kara's works through sound effects, music, and visual cues. These were made possible by 24 interrelated web pages under different titles, seven music tracks, seven on original images, and 20, 20 hub original images. It is together by hacker text. In this way, this game represents the electronic archive as a work site where the work is under construction by the user. Devin and Sunderland Archive electronic archives provide a new, unique opportunity for readers and users to engage with literary works in new and innovative ways. In the case of this interactive story, the use of twine and audio visual texts allow the players to actively participate in the construction of the story, which creates a more immersive and interactive experience. Especially hypertext in this interactive story emphasizes the game players or under the context of the journey, the traveler's active role in constructing the visual representation of the exotic space. For example, the players can choose which part of the image they want to see or which stylized version of the exotic land they want to create for themselves. The player constantly approaches exotic landscape as something of their own making, which is in line with Peter's assertion that perceptions are reshaped by the, perceive, the perceiver and the surrounding circumstances. Reading Joseph Conrad's classical travel writing in a digital form, the interactive story highlights the active role of the player in perceiving, creating, and constructing the exotic land. In conclusion, the video games can be understood as a form that destabilizes the relationship between self and other. As a unique platform for collaborative storytelling, they highlight a present subject, the illusion of objectiveness and the gaze that is self-reflexive. By engaging with African exoticism in video games, we have seen how designers and players can work together to create and create a sense of collaboration and construction of the exoticism emerges the exotic representation as an individual subjective experience. And the game players approaches the foreign land as their own invention and the manipulation of the textual and visual images. By adding insights in the binary self-other relationship in the traditional post-colonial scholarship, this interactive media reveal and reflect upon the plain subject's conscious entertainment of the other as an imaginary space or an unheard of symbolic system as coined by Roland Barthes in his Empire of Sex. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.